Welcome to the seminar of the uh, History and uh, uh, Games uh, uh, Lab. I'm uh, delighted to have as our speaker, uh, our guest tonight, Francesca Carello. Uh, Hi, who, hello everybody. Who acted as, uh, uh, who is acting as uh, a historical and archaeological consultant uh, for uh, uh, Lex Arcana. Uh, Lex Arcana is a role-playing game um, that I, 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 I like to think about it as a kind of quasi uh, historical uh, RPG. Uh, you, uh, you, you might uh, uh, correct me there because it is set basically in an historical uh, um, setting or quasi historical setting because it is a um, uh, alternative version of the ancient Roman Empire, uh, a ancient Roman Empire that, however, has not uh, fallen. Uh, I think if I remember That's correctly, the point. Setting, in the 6th sixth, sixth century or 5th century? Or no, no, it's uh, the 5th uh, century. Actually, actually, we are in year 475. So very precise. Um, yes, because it's the year in which uh, the Western Empire uh, fell in reality. So it's a very, you know, important uh, and uh, significant uh, year to start uh, this alternative uh, world. So it's precisely that year. And uh, is, uh, it has not fallen because of, no. uh, partly because of the use of magic. So that yes, is, so, yes. there, is, there are fa some fantasy elements, uh, but they, these are fantasy elements are based on classical culture. Right. Uh, so again, uh, in, in a way, is historic, they, they, the, the fantasy element is an historical fantasy element because it comes uh, from uh, uh, the historical, ideas about magic and other cultural ideas uh, uh, that come from that period, that, from the, uh, from the uh, ancient world. And it is the, uh, the theme of the evening is the relationship uh, between the historical elements of uh, uh, Lex Arcana and the fantasy elements. And uh, uh, Francesca uh, will uh, expand, uh, uh, expand uh, uh, on that. But without further ado, um, Francesca, to you. So thank you and uh, thank you so much for inviting me. I'm very uh, excited to be here. Actually, this is not the first time I do something uh, with the University of Edinburgh because in year 2000, precisely, I delivered the paper to a Congress uh, held in Edinburgh. The Congress was, uh, uh, the title was uh, um, Games and Festivals in Classical Antiquity. And I spoke about uh, the naval battles, the Naumachie, held in the Flavian Amphitheater. Because I graduated in very distant past uh, from the University of Rome with a dissertation about uh, uh, the underground section of the Flavian Amphitheater. So Naumachie were, you know, the, the main problem to investigate. Were they real or not in that? Uh, particular building. So actually, I specialized in the most important, uh, in the in probably the largest uh, building dedicated to games in antiquity, and that uh, was not probably um, uh, only by uh, chance. Um, because I was a role player long before I was a, a student and an archaeologist, so the two things are so well connected uh, uh, in uh, my life. I have uh, prepared in a presentation uh, with many slides. Uh, there are so many that, uh, you know, <laughs> I don't want to scare you, but actually uh, some of them uh, are only there to uh, show the beautiful artwork from uh, uh, the Lex Arcana uh, role-playing game. Uh, so I hope I'll be quick to um, explain the main points uh, uh, regarding uh, the, the developing of uh, this uh, game. I also have a timer here. Let me launch it because I don't want to be too long. Okay, there we go. Now, I try to um, share my screen, which is always a miracle to me. I'm not sure I can do it, but maybe I can. Yes, yes, here we are. So. Uh, I'll talk while I show you the slides, so it's uh, easy to, you know, follow what I see, what I say, and I apologize in advance for my English, which is not my mother tongue. Latin is much better, but I think that probably you wouldn't be as happy as I would. So, 
there we go. About me, two very quick words. Uh, this is in chronological order. I was a role player well before I was anything else. Then I graduated in archaeology, and uh, I am uh, I always uh, I've always been a avid reader of science fiction and fantasy. And uh, eventually, I be became a writer. I'm a published author. Um, and um, after uh, some years, uh, I became the historical consultant for Lex Arcana, and I'm also the author of some of the expansion modules uh, of uh, this game. Uh, in the picture, uh, of course, uh, the Colosseum behind me, but I I ho I'm holding the um, uh, original module, uh, expansion module uh, in Italia, uh, which was published in 1997. Uh, the, the picture is uh, more recent, but actually uh, this was my first uh, uh, step into the role-playing game world. So there we go. Our goal today is to explain the differences between uh, a mere adaptation of, uh, you know, the mechanics of a fantasy uh, role-playing game to a Roman setting, uh, uh, because we actually what we did it was creating a true uh, Roman world even if it's a different kind of Roman world uh, because it's that's magic uh, the magic is real the magic uh, works and uh, but actually it's still uh, ancient Rome and uh, uh, I'll try to explain how uh, you can uh, be you know, um, respectful of the uh, ancient, of the original sources, the ancient sources, the original texts, and uh, uh, but uh, anyway, being also creative and inventing something new, and still uh, have fun writing and playing this uh, uh, new game. Lex Arcana, I. I like to call it a Mediterranean RPG because, especially when uh, uh, it was published the, the first uh, time uh, in 1993, uh, uh, the fantasy, medieval fantasy uh, RPGs were very popular. Of course, uh, the most popular was uh, Dungeons and Dragons, but there, are, there were a lot of, you know, clones in a way or a derivation from the original. We even had in Italy a game called, an Italian game called Catacumbas, uh, which uh, uh, had uh, this uh, um, uh, Roman name, catacomb, catacomb, but actually it was a more, more similar to a D&D setting, uh, uh, not so really Roman, uh, except for the name. Um, Lex Arcana was the first one who tried to introduce, uh, to change uh, this, uh, you know, tradition of a medieval-based uh, um, role-playing game and try to use the uh, tradition, the mythological tradition we uh, had in Italy, so abundant actually, and to, you know, use it in a way which was original and uh, suitable for the game. So what's, what is Lex Arcana? Lex Arcana is a, an historical role-playing game set in an alternative 5th century CE and precisely in year 476. This is the date that we learn at school in which uh, the Roman Empire had uh, fallen. But actually, uh, and so it's very significant to take this year as a starting point uh, for something completely different. different. It's not even a year 476, it's uh, the 13th century of uh, the long history of Rome. It's 1229, Abur Becondita, from the founding of the city. This is the world of uh, Lex Arcana, uh, this uh, uh, beautiful uh, map drawn uh, by um, Francesco Mattioli, uh, who is our cartographer, uh, and shows the uh, Roman Empire, uh, this Roman Empire, at the, um, in, in all his uh, uh, extension. Uh, it's uh, uh, divided into four provinces, uh, no, provinces, I'm sorry, um, prefectures, and in every prefecture there are four um, or five uh, provinces. 
the provinces have the name that we already knew, knew uh, from our studies at school, uh, but they are grouped in a different way. Um, the extension, the geographical extension of this uh, empire is the one reached under uh, Trajan because it was the largest ever reached by the Roman Empire. So in the game, uh, we pretend that uh, it, the, empire, the empire never shrinked and it uh, lasted for centuries uh, as large as possible as history uh, taught us. And why uh, this empire is still not only um, surviving, but uh, so large, because uh, uh, the emperors managed to you know, uh, avoid all the problems that we learned uh, through real history. So there was no uh, collapse of the empire and uh, because the, the emperors use magic, but not a, uh, any magic, but the uh, special magic used uh, in the traditional Roman magic, divination. And divination is very important because uh, the aim of Roman magic is to understand the will of the gods and uh, keep the peace with the god, this alliance with the gods that granted uh, the empire uh, this uh, long uh, life. I'm sorry. Okay. So uh, the emperors, not only the emperors, but all you know, the establishment of the, the empire, uh, using uh, not only magic, but the knowledge absorbed by the many peoples, uh, people that uh, in, with which the, the empire came in contact, everything uh, so, um, was useful to uh, maintain the, the empire safe and, uh, um, and, uh, and, and, and large, <laughs> I must say. But uh, something is changing, and this is uh, the starting point, point of the game. Uh, in this fatal year, uh, 1229, the emperor, uh, he is called Theodomirus because the first publisher of uh, Lex Arcana was uh, a, publish, uh, a publishing house uh, Dal Negro, uh, an Italian one, and the head of the publishing house was uh, Mr. Theodomiro Dal Negro. So the authors decided to give the name of the, the publisher to the emperor. So Emperor Theodomirus, uh realizes that something is changing uh, there are evil forces uh, uh, at the border of the empire and so something is needed to maintain uh, the uh, uh, empire stable so he issues uh, this lex arcana which is the name of the game uh, it's a special law that establishes a, a chapter a special chapter of the praetorian guard uh, the cohorts arcana cohorts auxiliary arcana uh, and uh, that's the beginning of the game. The course Auxiliary Arcana, being a cohort, uh, is made of uh, 600 in Lex Arcana world, actually it's 600, 600 um, soldiers, actually they're not normal regular soldiers, they are custodes, wardens, uh, and they are both male and female uh, because they have special abilities. They can you know, use or better understand how magic works. Many of them are diviners, so they are, you know, a special kind of, uh, uh, of uh, military uh, unit. Uh, and they, uh, what, what do they do? They have to um, investigate uh, strange uh, uh, events uh, within the empire and uh, at its, board, its borders to understand if there's a threat for the empire and if the, this threat uh, is discovered to, um, to destroy it. Uh, so it's, uh, the game is based on investigation and in this, uh, it's very different from Dungeons and Dragons, especially when it came out, because uh, everybody keeps, uh, uh, I remember everybody kept uh, asking, well, well, but do we have fireballs? Do we have uh, attack spells? No, we don't, because uh, the magic in this game is um, uh, mostly uh, uh, based on divination. 
uh, you use it uh, to investigate and only the bad guys have uh, uh, attack spells. Uh, the custodes are divided into, into some uh, offices, um, like in any role playing game, uh, there are categories. Uh, each group is specialized in something, but all of them can do the same thing. Uh, they can fight, they can be diviners, they can cast spells, but some of them are more specialized. And all of them, uh, all the, the, these uh, categories are under a tutelar deity. Uh, who grants special abilities and sometimes spells to uh, their um, protects. There is also a secret one which was introduced in this new edition of the, the game, uh, an assassin. Actually, who plays the assassin is always undercover. Uh, even his um, uh, friends and companions do not know that he, is, uh, he has this special uh, uh, ability. In the in uh, the, the game was um, first published in 1993 from uh, the publishing house Dal Negro, uh, and it was a boxed set. The one you see is a box, actually, is the lid of the box. Inside there were uh, four quite thin booklets. Um, one was the core rule book. The other, uh, another one was a, a sort of um, a compendium of the world in which Lex Arcana uh, took place. Uh, another one was a sort of monster manual, and the third one was about uh, um, equipment uh, and was dedicated more to the players. Uh, the other were uh, thought for the, the game master, uh, who in this game is called a demiurge. In 2018, actually in 2018, uh, a Kickstarter was launched to republish uh, Lex Arcana in, una, in, in a new uh, edition with new rules, uh, not exactly in the same, uh, with the same uh, um, setting. No, the setting is the same, but not in the same, uh, with the same rules. Which were quite, uh, you know, sometimes they they look a, a bit old, so they were uh, updated to uh, a new uh, interpretation. Uh, it was published by uh, Quality Games. The authors uh, you, you, that you see uh, listed below um, were uh, the original. Uh, authors and uh, they also participated in developing the new version, the updated version uh, of uh, the, the new edition. They added uh, some new rules uh, and um, they, they you know, made some adjustment to let uh, the players uh, um, uh, have a stronger character uh, their uh, character can now have a sort of um, uh, path going uh, from uh, a, 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 a not very uh, expert uh, custos to a very expert one with more abilities and, uh, for example, uh, more spells in a way. They're not called spells, but anyway, abilities, divination abilities. Um, uh, not only the core book was, were, was uh, published, but also some modules expanding the world of uh, Lex Arcana, the Encyclopedia Arcana, Encyclopedia Arcana in Latin. It's uh, the same spelling, but <laughs> uh, it's a different uh, pronunciation. Um, I, was, I am the author of uh, the Encyclopedia Arcana, uh, which is the handbook uh, for everything you need to know about this alternative uh, Roman world. Uh, in some, some things, um, some aspects have, is similar, but many things have changed. So this book provides uh, um, uh, a help uh, to uh, design adventures in this world. Mysteries of the Empire is a collection of uh, adventures some made by very famous uh, authors in the role-playing game uh, world. And uh, uh, as in, in the 90s, we have some uh, uh, expansion modules. They are geographical. They cover a province. 
And uh, uh, since now, uh, three uh, were published, Egyptus, Italia, Dacia, and Tracia, and more are on the way. And uh, the one uh, who is uh, on the way now, which I completed actually a couple of months ago, um, regards you very closely <laughs> because it's set uh, in the province of Britannia. Now, uh, how do we build how the world of electric kind of was built in the beginning the idea came to uh, the original authors especially two of them after a very a very uh, interesting um, uh, university course about about uh, uh, ancient uh, uh, religions that is why this game is so specifically um, uh, con based on Roman uh, divination and not only on uh, generic magic like other uh, role-playing games of the same uh, period. So three things uh, can be said about Lex Arcana. It's an alternate history, it's a Mediterranean fantasy, and everything revolves around the idea of Rome, which is very important because it's the pillar on which uh, everything uh, is based upon. Alternate history is very popular and it was <laughs> popular even in ancient times because even ancient historians uh, try to imagine some alternative to uh, moments in history that they found particularly particularly important. Of course, the, the Greeks uh, thought of what would have happened if uh, the Persian conquer, conquered Greece and especially Athens and uh, the Romans, Livy, uh, speculated about what would happen if uh, the enormous uh, military force of Rome clashed against another uh, great uh, military force, another great uh, um, uh, commander, such as Alexander the Great. When we talk of uh, um, alternate, alternate history, we, uh, of course, uh, must uh, talk about the point of divergence. The point of divergence is the moment in time where history went uh, in another direction, choose a different path, and so the history became something similar, but not uh, exactly equal to the one we learned at school. That moment in our uh, time in uh, Lex Arcana setting is symbolically uh, chosen. It was symbolically chosen, and it's the moment in which uh, Emperor Caracalla um, issued the Constitution Antoniniana, the Edict of Caracalla, granting the citizenship to all the people living within the borders of the empire. Of course, uh, uh, Caracalla was, uh, um, wasn't thinking of uh, uh, giving uh, 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 a right to all his citizens. He were, was more um, preoccupied, worried about uh, taxation. So if you're, uh, in the, the, the taxes could be imposed on a larger number of uh, citizens, so probably that was his idea of uh, uh, giving uh, the um, citizenship. But we thought it was uh, um, a nice idea to start with uh, a point, a, a moment in time where the empire changes and becomes more um, uh, variegated and diverse including all the many people living within the borders and so uh, it's uh, you know a, a, a nice starting point for a, a different uh, history so uh, we have to set a new timeline and uh, these in the appendix of the encyclopedia uh, arcana uh, there are many pages uh, um, trying to uh, summarize uh, the long history of the roman empire in this alternate setting. In red, we see the entries regarding Britannia. There are many, many more than this, actually. Uh, and in yellow, uh, on the um, right uh, corner, uh, we have the constitu constitution uh, from uh, by Caracalla. 
uh, not everything is uh, different uh, in the history of this uh, empire before the, the point of divergence because we are still talking about a world in which magic exists so yes it's a point of divergence but this is not real history even in the beginning so you know you have to take it uh, in a more relaxed way and uh, talking about uh, speaking about uh, uh, what a mediterranean fantasy is um, especially in the 90s uh, and then uh, in the in the 2000s too uh, many people were skeptics about uh, that uh, there could be a mediterranean an italian way to role playing games uh, or actually better to fantasy because this is uh, regards the literature uh, as well uh, because the mythological and uh, legend uh, legendary tradition of the mediterranean they believed that they didn't have the main elements that a fantasy must have to be considered a fantasy but actually we will see that more or less we have everything we need for example sorry but i have problems with these things okay so we have the more classic of monsters the werewolf it has it even has a latin name the versipellis uh, so the, you don't need to um, to look very far to find uh, uh, elements that connect this game uh, and the mediterranean fantasy to the more popular and uh, uh, widespread medieval uh, fantasy we also have dragons in the in lex arcana expansion and also in the core book uh, as well uh, we have many dragons uh, this one for example is a traditional dra dragon uh, in uh, the area of milan and uh, it was believed uh, to dwell this monster and actually it is even depicted in the coat of arms uh, of the city so it's a dragon but it's an italian dragon and it looks like a dragon actually it all uh, even has the uh, small wings uh we also have magic wands magic wands are not uh, uh, you know a medieval thing they uh, were the first uh, uh, mention we have uh, is um uh, connected to the sword uh, odyssey and also in the NH. so uh, she actually had uh, used a real um, magic wand probably a bit longer than we think not a harry potter magic wand a, a longer one but actually they it did the same thing uh, it turned uh, uh, things in our reality into other uh, shapes we can find even magic rings that we always connect to uh, middle ages and more, um, most of all with the, uh, the lord of the rings but actually magic rings and especially rings that turn uh, that allow the wearer to become invisible uh, they are very popular in antiquity there are many sources uh, talking about this uh, uh, ring of invis invisibility and this ring uh, is uh, just a, a nice picture actually it's not an invisible an invisibility ring but uh, it's uh, a ring uh, it has a beautiful story but actually it's connected with a curse a thief uh, um, a curse uh, uh, made by the owner who was robbed of his ring and he tried uh, for a very long time to find it uh, everything uh, uh, was tied together by Professor Tolkien, who wrote a small uh, uh, explanation text about the god to which uh, this uh, ring was dedicated, Nodens, who was a, a British god. So, in a way, uh, magic rings uh, came from antiquity and ended up into Tolkien's uh, uh, work. We also have, of course, divination spells because that's uh, the traditional uh, Roman magic. We also have a lot of uh, attack spells. For example, this is a, an original text from Prini the Elder mentioning three uh, different uh, uh, kind of uh, lightning bolts. 
we only had to translate it into English or Italian to have a beautiful spell to produce, uh, to summon uh, lightning bolts. Only the bad guys can do it, of course. Uh, the good guys, the Custodes, don't uh, attack by spells. But anyway, it was very easily provided by Pliny, by Pliny uh, this beautiful uh, spell. Uh, this is the interpretation of the rule. Uh, we also have attack spells, uh, not in a Mediterranean setting. This is uh, uh, Britain, actually, but uh, Tacitus told us about spells casted by the Druids uh, to stop uh, the invasion of the island of Mona, Anglesey, uh, which was the most sacred place of the Druid uh, cult. Now, the important thing we are now um, uh, reasoning around is the idea of Rome, which is uh, the most important thing when you write something, a uh, game or a, a, a novel or, a, or everything, uh, about ancient Rome. Each and every one of us has his, uh, her own idea about what Rome is. This is a good interpretation of uh, uh, the cinema, the, the movie was very good, but it was not faithful to history. But anyway, it was a movie, not a textbook. So, Lexicana uh, world is different because, okay, okay, this is the easiest thing. Uh, magic exists, of course, of course, but it's more advanced because peace made the progress more easy in a way. The empire was at peace, no war of expansion, so there was a, a decrease in the number of slaves. In reality, this caused an, an economic crisis. In our world, they decided to uh, use a larger number of machines, uh, so they had an increase in technology that changed this world that we are playing in. But everything is in the sources. I mean, there's no need to, to invent things because uh, in the first century CE, we, uh, someone, this Heron of Alexandria, invented something like the steam engine. They, they only used for um, opening uh, the doors of a temple and another small things. Uh, uh, but uh, if you want something really belonging to antiquity, to, uh, and we want to, you know, put it in our new world, a different world, we have a reliable source. We also have uh, the Greek fire, which is uh, more Byzantine in our uh, minds, but if this is not entirely true because we have mention of this uh, attack weapon even in uh, uh, centuries uh, much uh, uh, older uh, than uh, the Byzantine period. We also have mysterious machines. This is not a um, literary source, it's a, a, um, an object, a, a real object, uh, found in, uh, not far from a small island in the, in the Greek Sea. Uh, many pieces of this um, machine uh, are now at the Archaeological Museum in Athens. The engineer, many engineers try to reconstruct uh, this uh, this uh, st strange machine and eventually they ended up thinking it was a sort of uh, very basic uh, uh, calculator to calculate uh, the movement of the planets and the stars. What you cannot do and this has to do with the idea of Rome is to betray the idea of Rome. For example, we all know that uh, in uh, it's incredible, but in Roman, uh, the Roman army cavalry, they didn't use the stirrups. They just jump on their horses. The horses were smaller uh, than we have now, but actually they only um, uh, governed the, the the animals by uh, the reins, which is strange because you know it, it's impossible to attack an enemy if you cannot hold yourself uh, on your horse. So I try to, you know, suggest that probably we could introduce the stirrups uh, because this is a more advanced uh, empire. And uh, the the uh, the answers that we try to, you know, tell uh, this, uh, try to uh, ask the uh, players before publication of the second uh, Lex Arcana edition, if they 
could think of something uh, similar to the stirrups in the game of extra kind they say absolutely not because in ancient rome they didn't have it it's something uh that uh, uh, it was learned, uh, discovered later. So no way, if you want uh, the idea of Rome, you cannot have stirrups. Yeah, but we still have some evidence of it because this is uh, a silver denarius uh, uh, from the first century. And actually it shows something that it can be a sort of very, very basic stirrups. It can also be a sheet for a sword actually, but anyway, even um, with the, some uh, evidence of a possibility, uh, the idea was refused. Uh, this uh, um, society is more advanced and uh, in the way, uh, in another way, uh, women have more, um, uh, more space, uh, their role is uh, more free in a way, and uh, these are beautiful, uh, the beautiful pre-generated characters. There are uh, in the core book, there are 12 pre-gen characters. Six of them are uh, women and they cover all the possibilities. There are fighters, there are explorers, uh, diviners, everything is exactly like uh, their uh, male counterparts. Sometimes you only need a small, you know, um, touch to uh, introduce uh, uh, women in the game. Since everything is based on divination, augurs are very important in this game. So the first draft for the Encyclopedia Arcana for an augur was uh, a male, but then it was very quickly changed into a priestess. So you know, sometimes it's not so difficult. Sometimes uh, uh, sources provide, uh, uh, you know, uh, the, the uh, idea of what women could do in this world. For example, we have a notice, uh, we, we know of this Hortensia, the daughter of Hortensius, uh, who was a friend and a rival to Cicero. Uh, she was the daughter of an orator and she also was an orator and uh, she couldn't uh, um, work as a lawyer because she was a woman but actually she litigated uh, one case and she was successful uh, defending some women against uh, uh, an unjust and unfair tax we also have fighters if we want because uh, sources tell us that outside the borders of the empire there were people who trained the, uh, their girls their young girls to be uh, fighters like uh, young boys. We also found some uh, tombs with uh, uh, swords uh, and everything we associate with men, but the DNA exams uh, tell, told us that they were young girls and not, um, and not uh, young men. We also have uh, good examples of empresses doing more than just being the wife of an emperor. For example, uh, Julia Domna was the wife to Septimius Severus, but also under Caracalla, his, uh, her um, son and emperor as well. Uh, she was in charge of the bureaucratic system of the empire. Uh, so, yes, she was an empress, of course, in an, uh, but uh, we also have other empresses doing uh, a man's job. For example, Ulpia Severina, uh, for six months, uh, we only have coinage uh, uh, sources for her. Uh, for six months after the death of Aurelian, um, ruled in, his, in her own right uh, until a new successor, uh, a, a man, was elected. And Albia Domnica, another one, uh, after the death of Valens uh, uh, at Adrianople, uh, held the city of Constantinople against the Goths. Uh, the city was under siege, no, no uh, male emperor could reach the city, so she was in charge of the defense of the city. We also, uh, also have adaptation uh, made with language. Uh, at one point, uh, Mauro Longo, who is the author of Da Scientiasia, tried to invent uh, to, uh, a, a new kind of uh, weapons uh, with a special metal because uh, they were meant to fight uh, vampires, uh, need special weapons. And uh, he came out with this uh, metal, this adamant, but we were all worried that uh, the Marvel uh, Incorporated, uh, the big Marvel, uh, 
could uh, find uh, uh, inappropriate the use of the word uh, uh, adamantium, which is used for a Wolverine clause. Actually, a uh, quick research in the dictionary showed that the word adamans, uh, adamas actually, both in, in Greek and in Latin, means something very hard. It is used for, to, to say hard as a, a heart of stone or the gates of hell. So we use the real ancient world, word to, 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 to name this new metal avoiding problems with the, the Marvel. The Constitution Antoniniana, again, the edict from Caracalla was uh, taken exactly from uh, the text. There is only one copy in Germany. Uh, it was adapted. Uh, getting rid of everything was not you know, understandable or useful for our game or filling the gaps because, as you see, there are many gaps <laughs> in, the in the text. So it was modified and uh, uh, eventually we had this uh, version, which is very, very useful for the uh, uh, Lex Arcana world because it tells us uh, that uh, the emperor was subject to a great danger and was saved from the gods. So it's a, such a danger that the gods uh, themselves have to uh, save the emperor. It's a perfect scenario for a, uh, an adventure in Lex Arcana. So summing up, I'm a little late, but not too much. What do, what do we need when we work with uh, sources, uh, but we want to you know, create something invented, something fun to play, is to use an inspiration, not complete uh, worship uh, for what history teaches us. We can uh, get inspiration without following the lines uh, exactly. We must use sources because sources tell us a lot of things, but we can mix them, even if they are not from the same uh, period. And we also can stretch facts and concepts if they suit us. We can, you know, use them in a free way, still being uh, uh, faithful to the original idea, using realism and consistency, filling the gaps, but always keeping in mind that what we need to do is to preserve and respect the idea of Rome, which is a concept. It's not something that you can explain. My idea of Rome is the mid empire around the, the age of Adrian, but other people think of Augustus, the first emperor. Other people think of the Republican era where uh, Rome expanded throughout the world uh, and conquered uh, many, many, many countries. So uh, the idea of Rome is very complicated, but if you think of it, you know what it is. If you think of Rome, you exactly know what you think is Rome. So you always have to keep that thing in mind, even when you are inventing something completely new. So I think that this is it. I thank you. I can tell you, uh, I can say it in Latin, gracias Bobis Reddo. And uh, if you have questions, questiones, uh, I'm happy to answer if, if I can. So thank you, and that's all. Perfect, thank you, thank you, Francesca. And as Francesca mentioned, uh, now it is, there is a, a, the opportunity to ask questions. If you um, prefer to ask them uh, uh, by in the chat, I can read them aloud, or if you want to ask them, uh, directly, um, that is also a possibility. So um, now it is opportunity, perhaps I can, uh, I can start myself. Um, I, I, uh, I really liked the way uh, you use very closely your sources and you, uh, it seems to me that you try to be as faithful as possible uh, to the sources. And, uh, and of course you cannot be completely accurate because uh, a game uh, by itself is, um, uh, I mean, is, is, is impossible to be completely accurate because you need to be interactive. So at the moment you start to interact with history, uh, you, you, need, you start stretching it, as you mentioned, that it, uh, it becomes more flexible and you add element to it. So it's a matter of more of uh, being authentic more than completely, uh, com completely, uh, completely accurate. Um, right. Are there um, examples? Uh, and I'm, I'm not criticizing the, 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 the game by asking this question. Mm -hmm. I'm simply wondering, um, 
are there other examples in which you add to uh, deviate? You need to set apart from uh, uh, your sources in order to make the game more playable. Well, yes, <laughs> I mean, of course, uh, whenever you imagine a different, uh, if the starting point is, is that this history is different, of course, you have to betray your sources because, for example, uh, <coughs> since the uh, barbarians are not uh, so um, powerful now because the empire keep them at the borders, they, did, they never invaded uh, the, the empire. So uh, there were no uh, sack. The fact actually Rome was sacked twice before the the um, the fallen the, the falling of the empire this never happened in our world because the the, the, the goths never reached the, the borders of the empire well they were um, stopped well before uh, coming near A another thing there's no um, the uh, tetrarchy never happened I mean it it happened in a way, it was an experiment, a, a political experiment. Diocletian uh, uh, decided to divide the empire into two uh, halves and uh, put a Caesar and an emperor in charge of uh, the two halves. But uh, after some years, uh, they realized it wasn't a good idea, so they decided to unite the empire. So the empire is just one in um, in uh, in 476. Uh, uh, we have two empires and we uh, talk about the fall of the Western Empire because the Eastern Empire went on and on for centuries. This never happened <coughs> in Katana, the empire is just one, a whole empire. Ah, perfect, thank you. And I think in the meanwhile there are um, various questions. Uh, I think Geoffrey, you raised your hand. Mm. Yes, I did. Thank you. I have a couple of questions if you have the time for them all. I noticed that you have you ever thought of including the cult of Mithras in, in the gaming system at all there, possibly to show how Roman soldiers were tied to the god or the cult there and how he could impact individual components in the game? Uh, yes, we did. Mithras is an important god <laughs> in this setting. Actually, all the gods are allowed and uh, uh, respected and worshipped in this empire. Uh, all religional, uh, religions are equal, more or less. Uh, mm. There were no problems with uh, Christianity. They are more or less uh, tolerated in every place. And But, of course, there are some... Um, cults that are more suitable for the game and even if uh, Mithra's Mithraic uh, religion uh, doesn't uh, accept women it's not important because the uh, <coughs> the idea is that you can choose from many others uh, uh, so if if you're a woman you cannot join the Mithra's cult but you can join others uh, religions as well and there's no tension between uh, uh, worshippers of different cults this is one of the things that we invented actually <laughs> this is very invented but uh, we thought that uh, it was in a way mm, not useful to concentrate on religion wars uh, inside the empire when when the problems are outside the borders uh, there are evil cults uh, evil uh, priests and monsters trying to you know um, destroy the peace that the empire achieved so we decided yes to just touch the surface of some arg uh, some some uh, questions and not going in uh, in in the de in the deep well that actually answered the other major question that i had I was curious about how you addressed how the Roman pantheon was actually quite eclectic, including or drawing in different deities or cults from conquered individuals as well. As a small proposal, so though at the same time, while the Romans did have their difficulties with religious persecution, they also encountered some religions or cultures that were a lot less tolerant of alternative 
of interpretations of faith and that created almost internal disputes, not on the larger political scale of Rome, but on a more smaller regional scale. Uh, from your description, that wasn't included at all, but perhaps it could be maybe the basis for one setting or a partic particular branch of alternate history within the game. Well, not everything was covered in this alternative uh, timeline and not everything was uh, included in uh, all the modules we published until now because the idea is now we give especially uh, through the um, core uh, core book the the, the manual uh, we give a an idea a very large but uh, a little bit um, superficial maybe idea of this of how this world uh, works and then after publishing the geographical modules, we intend to uh, explain more things about a certain geographical area. So some things that are not covered in the core manual will be included in other uh, future issues. So not everything is there because it's, you know, sometimes impossible and we have to concentrate more to the on the rules, the game rules, because after all, this is a game. So the setting is very important. But sometimes uh, what you need is a rule to play. I, I make a, an example. For example, we have a lot of weapons because these custodes must uh, fight against evil uh, guys. Uh, the weapons uh, are taken from all the you know long history of the empire they all have some you know characteristic but they are very um, different between them this is not important even if it's not uh, um, consistent because what we need is a wide variety of weapons to choose from when we play so sometimes uh, we don't uh, uh, we skip some of the things we don't think are useful for playing and we concentrate on something more easy that is more you know uh, uh, useful to uh, keep the the story going and the game going uh, on i guess there is always a kind of editorial choice yes. what to include yes. and what to, to include and you have to streamline things but on the other hand being a role-playing game um, the uh, game masters can change things themselves. In fact, there is uh, always a bit, a bit of tension between uh, the, uh, the the core book and the core line, uh, the core uh, modules, and any, anything can be changed by by, by the players. I yes, mean, many players use house rules. They uh, invent their own rules uh, because they find that the manual is not, uh, you know, um, it's not perfect for it what they want to do with the game and that's and that's fine because the game is you know, i mean it's theirs theirs to play so if they want to change something uh, they can absolutely do it and they do it a lot and some complain about uh, complain about uh, things that they don't like or they feel the lack of other things uh, and so they ask if they can you know add uh, something uh, new more rules to their uh personal style of uh, of playing and the answer is always yes you can do almost everything you want because the game is yours i mean the authors uh, uh, write something then they release <laughs> they release the, the 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 game into the world and then it becomes uh, 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 the property of some someone else who buy the book and decided to play in his own in his their uh, their own way so yes many things are changed many uh, things are supposed to be changed because you know i think it, this happens in every in every role playing games i mean the 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 game master makes uh, his own rules Perfect. I, there are many um there are various questions in the chat so um, um i read them aloud uh, the first one is i'm curious how you have dealt with the wider world that is other states. I'm thinking of the endless rivalry uh, and conflict between Roman Parthians and later Sassanids. Do they exist in this world? Are they also practicing magic? Do wars not happen between states, only magic practitioners? Yes, they, uh, especially, especially 
partial and, and, and Sassanids actually, they do exist and they uh, always work <laughs> to do some damage <laughs> to the empire outside the borders. Uh, uh, not only that, uh, even sending spies uh, inside uh, the borders of the empires. And uh, uh, I, I, I mentioned before the Battle of Hadrianople, uh, the Battle of Hadrianople was lost by the empire, even in our world. And that's, if that was because the, the Persians used uh, um, an unknown magic that the, our empire uh, have never seen before. And so they lost, actually. It was a terrible uh, uh, battle, a tragedy like in the real world. But the, the, the reason for that in our war, in our game, is that the Persians used a magic unknown to, to, to the Romans. Yes, 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 absolutely. Will, will they be covered in a future uh, expansion? Absolutely. Um, uh, it's not a quick process, of course, but we, we would like to um, publish a, an expansion module uh, on uh, each province of the empire. Some provinces are small, like Trasha and Dasha, so they were uh, put together in the same manual, actually, but the idea is that one. So, eventually uh, a module will reach the border at the east of the empire and yes there, are, there will be more details about uh, the, the the peoples on the other side uh, and uh, their relationship with the empire uh, i uh, already mentioned britannia well uh, britannia was uh, one of the borders of the empire our empire uh, uh, only, um, well, uh, it's uh, the border of our empire is the Hadrian walls, well, like in, uh, you know, in reality. And actually everything is, which is outside of this border is, you know, described uh, in the module, even if it's, out, or probably because it is outside the border. So uh, eventually when we, someone will write a module about, uh, you know, well, a place far east, uh, probably will include some details about uh, the Persians and, you know, peoples living on the other side of the border. It's uh, something that we already uh, have planned. Perfect. Thank you. Another a question by Emmet. This seems uh, like a fascinating project and I'm a Celsicist. I'm very excited to read uh, the book on Britain. I was just wondering, as a big fan of, uh, uh, that I do not know what they stand for, TTRPG, TTR. How does the game deal with the imperialist undertones of the game? Uh, the players being agents of imperial authority, clashing with people outside the borders seems to cast them more in the image of the bad guys. How do you address these uh, issues when making the game? Okay, now we pretend that uh, we are all at peace. So even in Britain, actually, the, uh, inside the border, uh, there's uh, this beautiful, uh, peaceful empire and uh, descendants of the uh, British tribes live in peace <laughs> with the descendants of the Romans invaders, actually. But uh, nothing is exactly as it seems. So there are many, uh, you know, um, conspirations uh, going on in this place or the other. And uh, yes, there is, a, well, the, the, the game is written uh, uh, from the point of view of the Romans, of course. So they're not invaders. They just brought civilization <laughs> to this faraway uh, land. But in a way, we wanted to create, a, yes, a peaceful setting. So more or less, uh, the, even, you know, Celtic areas uh, accepted the, the status quo, even if uh, to create a, a hook for the game, there are many people who don't accept the presence of Romans, but they don't tell, uh, you know, publicly this thing. They uh, prefer to try to, uh, I don't know, um, use an ancient kind of magic against uh, what they consider uh, the, the invaders, or on the other side of the border, in the north, in Caledonia, like you are, um, there are many powerful 
people, warriors, that don't accept these borders. So they always try to, you know, crush it and invade the southern uh, portion of the, of the, of the island. Uh, so yes, um, the idea is always to create, uh, to give the idea that the, this empire works in a way, no? that they were successful in creating this diverse uh, uh, and large empire. But uh, of course, uh, you cannot have peace uh, everywhere and not every person uh, under Roman rule uh, is happy uh, to, to, to be ruled. So yeah, there's a lot of, you know, um, uh, room to move for a demiurge, for a game master to create uh, the, 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 the ideas that can create a, an adventure. So there's peace, but under the surface, many, uh, many, many, uh, it's the rest, everything is not so at peace as it seems. And that's the, you know, the, the, the heart of the game. You, you must create, uh, you know, uh, a, a sort of uh, um, lack of, uh, how do you say, how would you say, lack of uh, uh, equilibrium, because if every, if, if every is okay, there's no, there's no point in the in uh, exploring or trying to find an adventure. That's the main point of main point of the game. Thank you. Um, Isaac uh, wrote: uh, There are no religious wars inside the empire. The empire inside the borders is peaceful. Technology has evolved. It is also inevitable that population boosts happen. Given these premises. Assuming I got them right, why does the empire refrain from expanding? Why not finish the conquering of the British Isles, uh, finally um, finishing the conquest of Germania, Scandinavia, etc.? Uh, Postscriptum, will there be a regional book on Hispania? I think um, Zoom froze. Is frozen? Uh, okay, yes, here we're back. The, <laughs> the last question. Uh, yes, there will be a regional book on Hispania, absolutely. Uh, it's already planned and I am very excited because I, I'm, I don't think I will be the author very excited because one says so <laughs> I have to see a, um, a module about Hispania. As for, yes, this is very interesting. This is the problem when you, you know, mess up <laughs> with history. If you change something, then uh, a lot of changes uh, derive from that first one. So yes, um, the idea is that we reached a, a point in history in which something must change. And ac actually is, it is changing because the speech of the emperor implies uh, creating uh, each, uh, the, the, the um, cohorts arcana, issuing this lex arcana, implies that uh, this perfect uh, al alliance with the gods, uh, this peace uh, maintained for such a long time, it's, it is in a way uh, a danger. There's something that to destroy equilibrium. Yes, uh, probably they would, but not now. I mean, the uh, everything takes place in these years. I mean, the, the first module is set in 476. For example, Ital Italia uh, is um, the, the date of uh, the empire is two years after uh, the the, the, the data of the first of the core book. Everything goes on, but very, very slowly, because it's always the same idea we want to preserve. This idea of Rome, this is the Rome at its best. So many things will happen and the modules will tell other histories, uh, other stories about uh, the empire, but not all at once and not uh, everything is as i said not everything everything is in the core book or in the encyclopedia arcana 
they are like a picture of this year the empire empire as it is now from now on the times uh, the time uh, is uh, going uh, on sorry okay uh, the um, time is going on uh, so something will happen next but we now don't know exactly what where and how even if yes of course we can imagine with a boosting population probably there will be a problem of uh, you know finding food for everybody uh, so you can increase the production because you have machines but if you feed more people more people is being born every time so you know it's a chain that you can't that you can that you must uh, break in at some point but this will be the job of future uh, expansion books and uh, uh, one last question actually moves uh, the conversation to uh, um, a different theme. Um, Hamish uh, wrote, you have spoken mostly about the more explicitly setting elements of the game. Has your input as a scholar of the ancient world influenced the game mechanics as well? Well, not really. As I said, the, the, uh, the point of the game of, is of being fun. So the rules, uh, the, the rules were made by professionals because the four original authors, and especially now, um, uh, Marco Maggi and uh, Francesco Nepitello are very famous, worldwide famous authors of games of every kind, from tabletop to RPGs, everything. So they, when they write a rule, the rule is, uh, you know, uh, makes the, the, the game more enjoyable so they are in charge of, of that thing i suggest sometimes uh, uh, what can be used to apply a rule for example uh, there are many the the characters the players may choose uh, between many uh, suit of armors as in an, any role-playing game from uh, the simplest uh, uh, cheaper one with less protection to the heavier uh that uh, uh, grants a very a good protection against against blows but what kind of armors because when we think of uh, uh, ancient rome we think of uh, you know probably uh depleted one or some others uh but uh, you need more or less 10 levels of armors to make the, the game uh, more enjoyable so sometimes I provide suggestions, say, well, uh, in this place, in this uh, time, in this uh, country, they used uh, this traditional kind of armor. Maybe it can be second level. It's, uh, you know, not very heavy, but it's uh, easier. Uh, to move in oh, and, and sometimes you say no no i don't like this because i don't like the look of it because it's the idea of rome <laughs> that you have to preserve they don't look roman enough sometimes they look because they are from other people for example pre-roman peoples like the samnites so sometimes they're not good for the game because they don't look roman but sometimes they are useful because yes they're precisely what they needed to cover the third of fourth level in armors italia the secret armor something like a uh, you wear under your uh, your clothes uh, in, when you want to act in disguise and that is precisely a very ancient armor taken from a pre-roman population so sometimes you know it's a question of providing a suggestion because i saw more armor than they did probably more objects so sometimes uh, my role is uh, to help in uh, designing uh, a, a visual uh, content professionals uh, in uh, designers Perfect. Thank you. I think a Zoom. Uh, um, yeah, sometimes uh, it's unstable. Yes. Yeah, it was a bit unstable, but uh, uh, perfect. Thank you. Um, 
Uh, something very quickly that we have not discussed is the use of maps. I can see the maps be, oh, behind yes. you. And uh, the one that you can see is on the very top is actually a map of Alexandria, you said. Um, yes. I remember yes. being very impressed by um, maps of uh, Roman settlements, uh, for example, or Roman cities. It seems to be, uh, um, they're, they're, apart from being beautiful, uh, I was wondering, yes, probably there, it looks like they have a, uh, there is an archaeological uh, research element um, and expertise behind them. Um, I saw other maps, for example, of Roman villa uh, and, and, yes. and, and so on. So there seem to be... There are many. There are many, especially of places where you can um, organize a, a, an event of the game. For example, villas or uh, more com complex building like the baths uh, or uh, cities and that's what, uh, you know where my expertise because sometimes it, well most of the time it's not for the game there are many maps uh, drawn after the excavations uh, so they are not very you know um, appealing in a aesthetic way uh, or they are difficult to understand because there are a lot of gaps you have to fill in if archaeologists do this all the time but of course a um, an artist uh, cannot you know invent everything because he cannot learn everything so what i do most of the time is provide a map sometimes i draw them myself with photoshop using the base uh, as a base, uh, and, uh, and then I add a very horrible, uh, <laughs> but they, use, they are useful because I add what redraws everything in a uh, beautiful, elegant way, uh, avoiding him uh, the problem of finding a suitable map because there are many, not all, and, and you, can, you cannot ask uh, an artist to know exactly which buildings and monuments put into a map of a certain city, you have to provide them. So that's uh, something very, uh, well, I, that I do so, so often, probably more than other things, providing, Finding uh, provides uh, for uh, for the. I think Zoom uh, is playing at the moment. But uh, any other question? It seems that we don't have any other question. As a final remark, um, I'm very tempted to organize a um, a, a session, a session. Of, uh, <laughs> uh, of of Lex Arcana, as we did in the past with uh, Dante's Inferno. Uh, you can see. The, uh, oh, a, yeah. a, a, a session of um, Dante's Inferno, which was published um, around the same time, perhaps a little bit later, well, for the Dante anniversary, so a little bit later, uh, on our, uh, our YouTube channel. Um, thank you again, uh, Francesca. Thank you for uh, a thank very you. fascinating uh, paper, and thank you for answering uh, our questions. I look forward to uh, try the new edition of uh, Lex Arcana. I had the first edition, but I have not uh, tried the, uh, the second edition yet. Uh, and uh, this is the last seminar of uh, our series for this uh, uh, academic year. Uh, we'll start again uh, uh, in uh, September. Uh, please, if you have not already um, uh, signed for our mailing list, uh, you can do that by looking at our uh, uh, website. Uh, which is here, and uh, we will advertise there the seminar from next year. We start again in September, and together with seminars, uh, we will have also um, some play tests. Uh, perhaps we can organize one of, uh, of Lex Arcana. Thank you all for attending tonight, and uh, I look forward to see you again. Thank you when so we... much for your patience. Ah, thank you. Uh, I, uh, by the way, uh, the recording, as I wrote in the chat uh, of this uh, seminar, will be posted on our YouTube uh, uh, channel very soon, but I will advertise that on our Facebook page. Uh, thank you again. Thank you, Francesca. Again, thank you. It was a pleasure and an honor, and I hope uh, to see you playing with Lexacana in the future. Perfect. Let's get organized for that. Yes. Thank you, okay. everyone, for attending tonight. Thank you so much. Okay. Goodbye, Bye. everybody. Thank you.